the Lord will come and not delay. He will illumine what is hidden in darkness and reveal himself to all the nations. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. My brothers and sisters, we've entered this season of Advent. I realise that nothing has changed around here. I have to do something to uh, just to help us visually um, enter this season of preparation. Unlike Lent, when we are preparing ourselves to follow Christ to the cross, in Advent we are preparing ourselves for when he comes into our lives. Both are connected, but both are slightly different in a way. As we prepare ourselves to, for him to come into our lives, we can be sure of his love, his mercy. We can be sure that when we turn to him with honesty and in penitence, he hears us. And we can be sure that he wants the best for us, that we may be drawn into his kingdom. So let us gathering in his name in this great period of preparation offer to him those times of failing in our lives. Turn to us again, O God our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So let's pray. Prepare our hearts, we pray, O Lord our God, by your divine power, so that at the coming of Christ your Son we may be found worthy of the banquet of eternal life and merit to receive heavenly nourishment from his hands. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So we for the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wine, wines. On this mountain he will remove the, the morning morning veil covering all the peoples. And the shroud and wrapping all nations will be just destroyed death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every cheek, and he will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God, in whom we hope for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exalt and we rejoice that he has saved us. The hand of the Lord rests on this mountain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God response in the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever in the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit in the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever he guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with those, with these who give me comfort. The Lord's own ha in the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. You are prepared. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is our judge, the Lord our lawgiver, the Lord our King and our Saviour. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus reached the shores of Galilee, shores of the Sea of Galilee, and he went up into the hills. He sat there. A large crowd came to him, bringing the lame, the crippled, the blind, the dumb, and many others. These they put down at his feet, and he cured them. The, whole, the crowds were astonished to see the dumb speaking, the crippled whole again, the lame walking, and the blind with their sight, and they praised the God of Israel. But Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel sorry for all these people. They have been with me here for three days now and have had nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them off hungry. They might collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, Where can we get enough bread in, in this deserted place to feed such a crowd? Jesus said to them, How many loaves have you? Seven, they said, and a few small fish. Then he instructed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fish, and he gave thanks and broke them and handed them to the disciples and gave them to the crowds. They all ate as much as they wanted, and they collected what was left of the, the scraps, seven baskets full. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We haven't begun this season of Advent in a very Christmassy way. Um, it's the word the Christmassy seems to be falling into our language, doesn't it? It's kind of a Christmassy season, a Christmassy way of doing things. I'm certainly struck on, uh, if you're sitting around, we haven't got much to do at the moment, if you're sitting around watching telly, um, daytime telly is uh, not that I sit down and watch it all day, I'd just like to point that out. But when you do tune in, it's, uh, it's just full of sort of making things um, and what you're going to eat and how you're going to decorate your houses and, and uh, how you're going to find the perfect Christmassy thing to do. It's this time of year that now that's what I call Christmas uh, CDs are released um, and the music is rehashed and sent, <coughs> sent out. It does feel like a bit of an onslaught and we've only got to the... Um, Today's the 2nd of December, still another 23 days to go. But I suppose in a way, a sense of anticipation is uh, actually what really goes with this season. We have had a difficult year. There's no two ways about it. We've been faced by things that uh, we didn't expect. And we've been faced by a challenge to our collective mortality in a way that we would never have thought. And today we hear of uh, the first vaccine that has been um, um, authorised and will be distributed uh, to uh, the first uh, recipients over the next week or so. We're looking forward and there's a sense of anticipation. You often wonder if we go back to that first, uh, the, com the coming of Christ when he came at that first moment. What was it like before? What was it like before Jesus came? In the first kind of period of Advent. Well, there's an irony that that period of Advent was centuries, centuries. From the moment that Isaiah and the prophets started to hint that there would be a saviour, that there is a way out of the humankind's mess that are hoping for something, became part of the people of God's life. Atonement, the Messiah, it is still there, sits within our, within our Jewish cousin's lifestyle, uh, belief. But I suppose we had this moment as we moved up to, uh, we don't get anything of it in the, in the, in the uh, gospel stories yet, of course, um, we get a bit of Luke, we get a bit of history in Luke, um, Nothing in Mark, and, and, uh, and just a, s a smattering in Matthew of genealogy. But we don't get those last years. We know what was going on. We know that the people of Israel um, had been conquered yet again by the Romans. We know that previously before that they'd had the Greek kings 
Alexander the Great, the Macedonians, um, they've been overrun time and time again. And then as we roll back, we go all the way back, Persians, Babylonians, and the times and the Egyptians time and time again, when the people of God, the perfect people as they should be, have been overrun. And their dream of the great liberation has been dashed on the rocks. But we see in the scriptures, we see in the Old Testament, just looking at it kind of just in a, like a blanket view, that each time those things happen, something grows from within them. A prophet calls, Jeremiah, warning then eventually Isaiah calling back. There's this, this growing. Ezekiel, the ones saying, look within. Mend yourselves. And that moment of the coming becomes closer. And so in those last few years, um, Jesus was born in, in 4 BC, of course, as we all know. Um, they got it wrong, but uh, probably 4 BC. So in those last 10 years, 20 BC, we have a point where the Israel, the glory of Israel, is really quite gone. They are a puppet state under Roman occupation. Really, their religion is used against them. Let, you know, let the Jewish people police themselves, and the Romans don't need to put many troops in. They sorted themselves out. They're quite good at executing one another, killing and punishing one another. The Romans didn't need to do it, except a couple of times a year. Passover, of course, we know about that. But it is that moment of brokenness that the Messiah comes. But don't forget, he doesn't come just for the people of Israel. And that's the great kind of thing that they, work, they have to work out. The Gospels are this revelation that Christ the Messiah comes not just to lead the people through the gates of Jerusalem, up the pearly hill to, to, the, new, to the new Jerusalem. He's actually coming to draw people into a new age. A new age not governed by the um, conquering nations. A new age where liberation for, for the people is not within the greater, greater number, but is there for you. Liberation is now a personal thing through the Messiah. We have a few stories over the next uh, couple of weeks. I'll shut up in a second. <laughs> we have a few stories um, as we read from the daily readings because we haven't got stuff in the Gospels for before um, his birth. Well, not a lot anyway, not for four and a half weeks. So we're going to read of some of the things he's doing with the people. And the common theme that's going to come up again and again is this sense of healing, forgiveness and sustenance. Today we have it. Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, they bring the crippled, the blind, the dumb and many others and they put him in his feet and he cured them at his feet. At the feet of the judge. And he cures them. Even in what he was doing in his ministry, he was beginning to give them those little clues, give them those images of the ultimate cure, which is the cure that brings us into the heavenly paradise, we pray. And he feeds them, sustains them, and cares for them. The story about all the people sitting around, and they, they're hungry, we call it 5,000. This isn't, let's say it's 5,000 in Matthew's Gospel here. I don't know how many, but the crowds, and they're not sure, and he feeds them. There was a personal nature in the Messiah, which is different to the past. In the past, God has acted through pillars of fire and pillars of cloud. He has acted through earthquakes, destruction. He's parted the seas. He's wrought plagues and famines. He has rescued violently and aggressively at times, and he's punished violently and aggressively. But in Christ, it is one on one. It is now a personal relationship with God that we enjoy. 
So in this season of Advent, as I said at the beginning, I need to get some candles out, make it a bit more Adventy. We begin this preparation of waiting for the coming of Christ. Whether it is in the great glorious coming when he'll come together to hear all the living and the dead, or when he comes to us. Either way, it will happen. And either way, it could be the greatest cure, the greatest healing that we may ever hope for. And so we continue to pray for the world in which we live and for those tending and caring for their neighbour in need, for all in our health services, social services, for all tending our care, caring for our vulnerable and for those in our residential homes. We pray for our emergency services and for the mechanisms being developed to bring vaccination to the nations. We pray for our own communities in which we live as we adjust to new ways day by day of living amongst one another, for responsibility, for generosity and selflessness in actions. We pray for those we know who are suffering, whether you're isolated, those who are alone, those who are worried, and for all who are sick and ill or injured those on our parish sit lists and those who ask us for their prayers. We pray for those who have indeed come before Christ Jesus our Saviour, that they may be welcomed into that glory which he offers for his people. And so we place ourselves humbly before Christ Jesus our Saviour and place our own lives before him, seeking his strength, his comfort and his mercy. Hear us Lord as we raise up our lives to in prayer, read our hearts well and answer these prayers in ways we know and in ways we cannot understand. We call upon you Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands are made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly, to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with the angels, archangels, with all the thrones, dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Jonathan, Robert, Nick, our bishops, your clergy, and all your people who be called to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Bartholomew, Mark, and Mary of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Behold, our Lord will come with power and will enlighten the eyes of his servants.
So let's pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.